Celebrating more than 20 years in the field of video communications, Jeremiah Films continues to lead the way as an effective creator of hard-hitting, life-changing motion pictures. Through its high standards of excellence, Jeremiah Films has impacted the world with its production and distribution of intelligent, innovative, and thought-provoking films, videos, books, and music. The founder and president of Jeremiah Films is award-winning motion picture producer Patrick Matriciano, whose work has been praised by a number of well-known leaders from around the world. So I would say to Pat Matriciano, you did the country a great service in producing Pat those tapes. Making Matriciano! Shows. As a result, Mr. Matriciano has become a much sought-after radio and television talk show guest. His wife, Jeremiah Films co-founder and creative director Carol Matriciano, is an internationally recognized cult expert a best-selling author and researcher who has co-produced many of the organization's most successful titles. With its in-depth analysis of ancient and modern world religions, Jeremiah Films is at the forefront of providing authoritative, biblically-based insight into a myriad of expanding new religious movements. In addition to its meticulous research, Jeremiah Films has been the first to exclusively capture a number of secret religious rites and rituals on camera. These groundbreaking documentaries filmed all over the world feature leading experts whose skilled examinations provide a clear understanding into the often confusing and conflicting faiths which abound. We at Jeremiah Films invite you to join with us as we continue to educate and equip those who desire to know the truth concerning the many challenges facing our world. For a complete list of products, including new releases, visit our website at www.jeremiahfilms.com or write us at P.O. Box 1710, Hemet, California, 92546. To place an order, you can email us or call toll-free 1-800-828-2290. Teenagers across America are playing with a new and frightening game, Satanism. Their school books are marked up with satanic symbols, upside down crosses, pentagrams, the number 666. Their fashions glamorize the demonic. They are seduced by heavy metal heroes, many of whom feature satanic imagery in their songs and album covers. For some of these young people, the fixation on violence, evil and death leads them to commit abominable crimes, including suicide and human sacrifice. Joseph Beeson, 18, and Edward Bennett, 19, both raised in Mormon homes, drew blood from their own veins and mutilated animals in satanic rituals. But that wasn't enough, so they eventually killed 18-year-old Michelle Moore. Sean Sellers, 17, the youngest death row inmate in Oklahoma, brutally murdered his mother and stepfather because they tried to prevent his satanic rituals. Scott Waterhouse, 17, tortured and killed a 12-year-old girl in a grisly satanic slaughter. 
Pete Rowland, 17, formed a satanic cult with three other boys. After sacrificing a cat, they turned on Steve Newbury, the fourth member of their group, and beat him to death with baseball bats while chanting, a sacrifice for Satan. Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, was convicted of 13 murders and 30 other felonies. During the summer of 1985, he beat, strangled, raped, sodomized, shot, and slashed his victims in a rampage of sadistic, satanic slayings. In the spring of 89, the dead bodies of 13 victims, one of whom was only 16 years old, were found mutilated and buried in a common grave near the American-Mexican border in Matamoros. This satanic, drug-smuggling cult believed that sacrificing humans in bizarre rituals would give them magical protection. The victims had been dealt blows with a hammer and some suffered horrible mutilations, including the removal of brains, hearts, and other organs that were then boiled in blood. For those of us who have been involved in cult and occult research over the years, these atrocious reports are unfortunately nothing new. They are only the tip of the iceberg. Because Satanism is by nature clandestine, it's hard to estimate the numbers of people involved. Not all satanic groups are involved in criminal behavior. But with increasing frequency, law enforcement agencies across North America and Western Europe are receiving similar reports of illegal activity. Satanically inspired child pornography and ritual abuse, animal mutilations, human sacrificial murder, cannibalism, rape, sodomy, desecration of graves and Christian churches are just some of the findings. Victims are from all walks of life. Their stories are grotesque and beyond human belief. The purpose of this video is not to over-sensationalize a hideous subject, but rather to inform you of a very real problem that is sweeping across our nation. What used to be hidden or secret is now arrogantly brandished in public by Satanists who recruit openly and display macabre graffiti and gruesome mutilations in public places. In this video, we wish to educate you and your family on how to protect yourselves from the effects of Satanism. Today, a growing number of people don't believe in the existence of a personal god or devil. However, Many believe in a force or universal power which can be tapped into at will and manipulated, used for good or evil, they believe, by performing various techniques and rituals. Among subscribers of this occult philosophy are white witches, black witches, and Satanists. Satanism and, and black witches worship Satan. Alongside of that, you have people calling themselves white witches or Wiccans who claim that they have magic powers, but they only use them to do good. There's a lot of confusion between Satanism and witchcraft. The two terms are usually lumped together as one. Satanism, as it stands, is basically a reversion and perversion of Christian symbolism. Whereas witchcraft, or wicker as we prefer to call it, is a totally separate, autonomous organization that, that has its own form of worship which is not related to Christianity in, in any way at all. When I first got into Wicca, it looked really good. It, 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 it seemed to be white and innocent and just going out and like gathering herbs and worshiping nature. But as I got higher degrees, I learned that the name of the horned god was Lucifer. And I learned that, the, for instance, the sign of second degree was an inverted pentagram, which is, of course, the symbol of black magic, the five-pointed star turned with the two points up, symbolizing the horns of Satan. And it began to dawn on me that there were things here that weren't quite as they should be. According to my Bible, witchcraft is witchcraft. God does not distinguish between black or white or gray. Uh, witchcraft allows you or teaches you to depend on supernatural powers and spirits to get things that you want on this earth. So I believe that despite all the good that Wiccans think they do, their power source is exactly the same as that of Satanism. 
Many officials have been reluctant to admit the horrendous ramifications of satanic activity in America and Europe. But despite opposition, some people have come forward and spoken against the upward swing of Satanism as a serious epidemic that must be considered. David Wilshire is one such person. As a British Member of Parliament, he actively alerts his fellow countrymen to the growing dangers of Satanism. Once you open up the mind to the sorts of ideas and imagery and history of witchcraft, where is the dividing line between something which is a bit of a giggle and something which slips very readily uh, in, into full-blown Satanism, if that's the right phrase for it, where there are no bounds to how nastily and foully you treat other people for your own gratification? Englishman Alistair Crowley, a leading inspiration in today's revival of Satanism, was a bisexual heroin addict and demonologist who was violently opposed to Christianity. In his book, Magic, he detailed the proper procedure for performing a child sacrifice. Crowley's powerful influence is seen in such groups as the OTO, Ordo Templi Orientis, and Colonel Michael Aquino's Temple of Set, an offshoot from the Church of Satan. In 1966, Anton LaVey founded the first Church of Satan in San Francisco, which at one point claimed 10,000 members. LaVey authored the Satanic Bible and Satanic Rituals, two of Satanism's most important books. Astonishingly, when the Satanic Bible was first published, it outsold the Holy Bible two to one in many parts of America and 10 to one on some college campuses. It teaches tenets that are totally opposed to goodness, purity, and selfless behavior. All religions are coming around to Satanism. We're in the uh, very throes of a new Satanic age. The evidence is all around us. All we have to do is look at it. Shemham Barash. Shemham Barash. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. To the Satanist, good is evil and evil is good. The truth is a lie and a lie is a truth. Sweet is bitter and bitter is sweet. And everything is twisted around the other way. The Satanists have merely followed the pantheist way of thought to its logical conclusion. If there are no absolutes, if God doesn't exist, he hasn't said, uh, set absolute limits to what we can do. So therefore, anything that the self decides it wants, the self can go after. We believe in greed, we believe in selfishness, we believe in all of the lustful thoughts that motivate man because this is man's natural uh, feeling. And therefore, Satanists take that to its extreme and say,